We just got July 2023 results for the CPI. That's the consumer price index. That's what we use to measure inflation. There's some great things in this report. There's some not so great things in this report. I want to talk about both sides of it and what I think it means for stocks moving forward. But first, if you're new here, I'm Austin. I'm a co-owner of CloudMusicSuite.com. I'm a stock market investor and the channel's sitting somewhere in the 1700 subscriber range. If you're not one of those people yet, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Drop a like for me as a thank you for doing those two things. Here's a picture of both my cats, Millie and Luna. They thank you for subscribing. Okay, CPI, the inflation numbers just came in and the forecast was for a 3.3% increase on a 12 month basis. We actually beat that a little bit down to a 3.2% increase on a year over year basis. The bad thing about that is that it's actually up from the prior month, which was a 3.0 print on the CPI. Now we're up to 3.2. So we're seeing a little bit of that reacceleration of inflation like the Fed had been predicting. I was personally expecting a 2.9% for inflation on an annual basis. We got the 3.2. Definitely was worse than my personal expectations, but not terrible by any means. That's about 1.2% above the Fed goal of a 2% inflation rate on an annual basis. Although we saw that re-acceleration of inflation up to that 3.2%, when we take out food and energy, this is called core CPI, the core CPI rose by 4.7% on a 12 month basis. And the important headline for that is that is the lowest that we've seen on a 12 month basis since October of 2021. So that's a multi-year low on the core CPI. So that core CPI coming in lower than expected and lowest it's been in over 20 months is a good sign that the Fed might might be able to chill a little bit. So the Fed uses these numbers to decide if they're going to raise rates again, if they're gonna hold rates steady for September. We'll see how it all plays out. We'll see what their analysis of the CPI is. But the core CPI coming in as a beat is a potential catalyst for the Fed not to raise in September, which could be bullish for stocks through the end of 2023. Another good thing is that the month over month numbers were 0.2 for the last two months. So from April to May, we saw a 0.1% increase. From May to June, we saw a 0.2% increase. And then June to July, we saw another 0.2% increase. And specifically June to July, we didn't just see 0.2 on CPI total, we also saw 0.2 on core CPI. So when you analyze that 0.2% increase, that turns into a 2.4% inflation rate if we're able to keep that at 0.2% or lower on a month over month basis, which means the Fed could get closer and closer to their target. The last Fed meeting, the commentary was pretty dang strong that they don't see themselves cutting rates until the back half of 2024 or even 2025. And this is because they really, really need to see that 2% inflation target in order to make a big policy change. If we hold steady at 0.2% increases every single month, month over month, that is not going to put us at that 2% inflation goal. You need a few months of 0.1% in order to get to that or multiple months of 0.1% throughout the year in order to get to that 2% inflation goal on a year over year basis. The stock market's response to this CPI report was pretty interesting. Before the report was released, stocks were up a little bit. After the report was released, stocks were up quite nicely because that core CPI was actually a beat at that 4.7%. And then throughout the day, we kind of sold off, sold off, sold off. And we had a small gain on the three main indices with the Russell, which is small cap stocks being down just a little bit. So the net of this was pretty much a big nothing burger for the stock market. And that's because we got mixed CPI. The CPI actually came in higher on a year over year basis, although it was a beat down to 3.2 from the 3.3 expected. The increase on a year over year basis is not something we wanna see if we wanna hear a dovish Fed. But on the other side of that, core CPI was a beat. The Fed seems to focus a little bit more on core CPI than total CPI because of, they say, volatile food and energy prices. Food and energy is pretty dang important. I can't live without food and energy. You can't live without food and energy, but that's what the Fed likes to do. And they focus a little bit more on that core CPI, which is making a lot of people think that they're gonna pause rate hikes for September and not raise until maybe October or potentially push it out, 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 and maybe not raise anymore. I do think we're probably still gonna see one more rate hike, which is gonna put a little bit more pressure on those risky stocks, those speculative stocks, those stocks that hold high debt loads. So what I'm doing with my portfolio right now is really not any different than what it was last week, not any different than what it was a month ago, two months ago, etc. I'm staying away from massively debt-ridden companies. I'm making sure I have 
my core holdings in stocks that have a massive pile of cash that's ready to go and the short-term debts are very low. Those are the stocks I wanna be buying right now. I'm not gonna be buying any crazy spec stocks. I'm not gonna be buying these massively, ridiculously high growth risky stocks, but rather I'm focusing on EPS positive companies. I'm focusing on great balance sheet companies and I'm focusing on cash flow positive companies. By the same token, I do hold some stocks that are EPS negative, not many, very few. I'm still holding those stocks. I'm not increasing my exposure to those stocks though. I do hold some stocks that are more in the speculative category. Once again, I'm not selling those stocks either, but I'm also not increasing my ownership in those companies right now. So that's what I'm doing in the stock market. Make sure I'm with capitalized companies. Make sure I'm with profitable companies. Make sure I'm with free cash flow positive companies. I'm continuing to make sure that my own personal finance situation lends itself to me having far more income than expenses. Last little point, I am increasing my gold position just a little bit. Not crazy. I'm not a massive buyer. If you haven't seen my video about potential recession and that USA downgrading from the government, go ahead and watch that video. But I am increasing my gold position just a little bit. So that's my take on the CPI. I want to hear what you're doing. Are you buying stocks? Are you selling stocks? Are you staying on the sideline? Are you not changing anything? How much does the macroeconomic environment change your investment decisions? I want to hear about it in the comments. I always love looking at the comments. It's one of my favorite parts of posting here on YouTube. I appreciate you being here and have a great day.